Hi, um, I'm Dale Koontz. I'm from the American Red Cross. Um, and then what we're going to talk about today is sort of, again, Typhoon Haiyan. So Haiyan was a big storm. It affected 16 million people. Storm, you know, winds of 200 miles an hour, storm surge of 6 meters, some high waves as high as 12 meters. I, I visited the destruction, and it was really, really bad. Here we see sort of, in the aftermath, we asked OpenStreetMap to contribute. We asked HOT to contribute. And we did that in a huge way. 1,600 volunteers made 4.8 million edits to the OpenStreetMap. And this really did supercharged our work. We were able to do things that we'd never done before. We were able to send people out the door with a map of exactly where they were going. We were able to convince people to go a different way because we knew that the bridge was out because we had that information. But we also were able to look at all of the damages that were done. You know, there were over one million buildings that were damaged. And we were able to look at it building by building and assess that. So in the aftermath, right after the storm, uh, we wanted to know exactly how bad it was. Right? And the Philippine government was reporting out stuff by barangay. Oh, so many houses were damaged. We would talk to some people. They'd say, oh, that data's great. We talked to other people. That data's horrible. Don't believe that data. Right? This is a bad problem for the Red Cross. So what we did is we took some data that we got from the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, that they did some gross damage assessment. We matched that up with OpenStreetMap building footprints, and we created sort of a, what we thought was good enough for a damage assessment. And then the professionals started to step in, and they started to really deep dive and, and tell us exactly where the mapping was being, uh, where the damages were. Problem was, this was really only focused in Tacloban. The entire Visayas of the Philippines was hit, not just Tacloban. So how could we use the crowd actually to assess this damage? How could we, could we engage volunteers to do it for us? Can we engage sort of the 1,600 people to give us a little bit more information? So we got a call on a Saturday, actually, at a Crisis Mappers event. And USAID called us up and they said, hey, Red Cross, can you guys help us uh, ground truth this damage assessment? Can we, can we have these volunteers do this? And we need to know, actually, if they're doing what they're doing is, is really good. So we started to map. We, started, we asked volunteers, we said, look, when you draw your building, tell us whether or not it's partially damaged or totally damaged. And we did this basically with like, no instruction beyond that, because we were sort of in the hours after the typhoon. It was crazy. So we uh, sent out one of our staff, Robert Bannock, to the field to do the ground truthing. This shows sort of where, where he went. We did a statistical survey, actually, of all the, what the crowd had, had done. And we were really disappointed, actually, sort of in the results, mostly because we have a different tagging scheme than the house shelter cluster. Uh, OSM has a different tagging scheme than, than the shelter cluster. And there are a bunch of other stuff, which I'll get to in just a minute. But the results were terrible, right? They, were, they really were terrible. Like, we used paper to help do our, our damage assessments. This was a big, a big problem for us. We didn't have a digital tool for us. Um, the results also showed that sort of OpenStreetMap volunteers they really, they only got it right about 35% of the time, right? And this is not a reflection on OpenStreetMap. This is a reflection on sort of what we did, how we prepped them, and the tools that we were using to do at the time. So the things that were limitations was imagery. Oblique, or I'm sorry, Nader imagery is great, right, for tracing an OpenStreetMap. But when you want to do damage assessments, you really want that oblique angle. And this was proved in, in Hurricane Sandy. The, you know, the oblique imagery and the power of the crowd can really do that. We really need better guiding materials. We need to say what a house looks like in the Philippines before and after, because that's much different than where a lot of the OpenStreetMap volunteers are coming from, because a house in Chicago or a house in New York looks a lot different than a house in the Philippines, right? We also need better imagery. We need better, sort of more frequent imagery, better imagery both before and after the events. We need a better base map. Kate's going to talk about missing maps, um, and I think you heard a call here to, to help map the Philippines. Um, but we need a better idea of what is before, on the ground before an event happens. What if we spend all of our energy not tracing what was just destroyed, but, was, but tracing uh, that, adding more information to the map? We need better field tools. USAID, as, as part of our partnership with them, are actually funding an application built on ODK that allows us to edit OSM data. So anybody can do their surveys, and you can feed that data straight into OSM. And I really encourage you to build new tools, right? Don't, don't settle for what we have. 
I challenge people sort of to support the Red Cross, to support humanitarians, to build those tools to help us sort of help and be good humanitarians.